everybody, Matt Geary for Geek Pride. I'm at Manchester Film and Comic Con, and I'm with the one and only Ian Price. How are you doing, sir? Doing very well, actually. Yeah, very good. Have you had a good weekend? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a very, very nice day so far. It is an absolute pleasure to... Like, I met you at the... Um, briefly at the dinner for the stars at uh, the um, Star Wars Fan Fun Day uh, would have been uh, last month I think and it was an absolute pleasure like um, I have been watching Star Wars <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm sure you get this all the time you get a lot of you, do, <laughs> you get a lot of fanboys but it is it is an absolute pleasure You're fulfilling people's dreams you are you are it is like um, it's, a, it's a amazing situation Darth Vader has now become is now regarded as the ultimate screen villain of all time. Like you know, and it's super cool though. And it's a, but it's a, sort of a fantastic accolade to have and live with, as it were. Like you know, and uh, and it, it just means that you know I can go to these shows all over all over the world. And I mean, I've, I've got 27 shows already lined up for between now and and the middle of next year. And they, uh, Seriously, incredible. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you know, they, they fly you in and so fly you out. This is, I mean, all over all over the world. I mean, we're not talking about just good touring touring Great Britain. I got them in. I got them in all over America, Canada, got them all over the continent. You know, yeah. And you still love it. It's not tiring. You just sort of like you just par through. Well, if with, I'm I'm a little bit immobile at the moment because <laughs> I've because um, I've I've got a bad knee and I'm hobbling around on crutches. You know, but I'm still I'm still managing to you know to you know to do the to do the shows and uh, but it's um. It's not quite as easy as it is when you when you when you when you're completely mobile. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, do, obviously, this is a, a massive part of your life now. Um, do you do you enjoy meeting the fans? Is it something that sort of like you know does it, does it warm your heart to meet them, or sometimes is it a bit sort of kind of too in your face? No, I I, lo I love it. No, I, I love every minute of it. I mean, I mean because. I mean, it's, 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 it's adulation. It's not, it's not, it's not, I mean, the fans come up and they think you're the greatest things in sliced bread, you know. And I mean, they, I mean, they really do. It's a, um, and it's, 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 it's strange how, uh, uh, some, you know, something you did, I mean, I did Star Wars in 1976. I mean, this is like 50 years ago, you know, we're, we're, you know almost like we're talking about. And it's, uh, it's, it's incredible how, how the thing has just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed all over these years. And, and, and and now I'm, I'm, I'm as I said I've got this, fa this fantastic reputation, and uh, and uh, and I get invited as I get invited to all these places places all over the world. So, so obviously talking about Star Wars in '76, um, you got that job because of your role in Clockwork Orange. I actually I, I got a phone call from George Lucas, who I'd never heard of. You see, and there's this he come, comes on the phone and and, and he, said, he said my name's George Lucas and he said I'd like to talk back to you about a film I'm doing. I said, excuse me, asking. I said, but I've, I've never heard of you. <laughs> I mean, well, at that time he was totally unknown, like you know, because I mean, uh, no, nobody had ever heard of George Lucas, you see. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this film called Star Wars, and I'd like to offer you the, 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 the role of the, the, the big villain of the film. And I said, oh, I said, well, thank you very much, you know. How, but I said, how did you know of me? I said, he said, oh, he said, I saw you in Clockwork Orange. He said, if you're good enough for Stanley Kubrick, you're good enough for me. <laughs> and that was it. I didn't have to read. I didn't have to do any, anything at all. You know, just turn up on the day, get measured for the costume and all the rest of it. And uh, next thing you know, I'm, I'm prancing, prancing, prancing around the Elstree Street Studios dressed in my black, black outfit. <laughs> I wasn't working with Stanley Kubrick. That must have been an honor as well. Well, that was lovely. I I I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. He's a, a very very hard taskmaster. Yeah, because when I when I got the when I got offered the job, um, people said you know you know you know be very careful, man, because you know he's like you know you know he really you know he's he's one of these people who says never be satisfied with one take if twenty will do, and it's like you know, and it's uh, so, but no, he was lovely. I I I, I you know. I, I got I got on very very well with him. I I think it was because I, people were frightened of you know people were frightened of him, and and and, I, and because they were frightened of him, he, he used to sort of tread tread all over them like you know he used to take advantage of it. And whereas with, with myself, you know I, you know I was like a I was a sort of big weight lifter, bodybuilder, and all the rest of it. And I think I think I had this imposing imposing physique and 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 a persona as it were. And uh, and Stanley 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 and I just got on like house on fire, you know. Talking about the uh, the bodybuilding and the weightlifting, it was um, the acting side of thing. Was that just something that came from that, or was it something that you wanted to do as well? No, I never ever wanted to be an actor. That was never that was never my ambition. I mean, I, I mean, I think I basically saw myself eventually. I was very interested in bodybuilding to start with, 
Um, and then, and that all started from my having t terrible problems when I was a, much earlier, when I was a boy. I had terrible problems with one of my knees. I had, to, I had tuberculosis on my knee. I spent a long time in hospital, and I grew and I grew like mad when I was in hospital. I was five foot nine when I went in, and I was six foot three when I came out. Like you know, and I was I was in there for a year. I in the hospital for a year, um, but then I came out and I was in a leg iron and things like this. And I started doing all these exercises to try and strengthen my leg up and things like this. And then I and I, was, uh, and I just got more and more and more interested in exercising and training and things like this. And and I was I was I was just finding that you know my my, my physique was altering and I was getting you know. Um, people, I was getting a, a lot of attention from people and things like this, and uh, and then and then from then, I, I, I then what, what really the acting side of thing never never really occurred to me. I, all I wanted to do was, uh, was 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 get work in gymnasiums, and uh, and and maybe even the possibly then opening up my own health studio, and and, uh, and that's basically what I did, and <laughs> and, and then and then th things snowboarded and snowboarded and snowboarded, and then I finished up with I finished up with my own. I had my own health studio. Um, at London Bridge, which, uh, near London Bridge, is a lovely, 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 lovely gymnasium there. And then I had my own, I had my own exercise consultancy in Harrods in, in London. Then yes. I had another gym, and then I had another gymnasium at the Grosvenor House in Park Lane. I mean, really, really nice places, like you know, all these places. And then I said, and then you know, through that, you um, you then meet a lot of interesting people. And it's like you know, I'd be, um, you know, Christopher Reeve, for instance, came to train with me. I, I trained Christopher Reeve for Superman. And I, I train, I train oh, lots, lots of famous people, you know, and, and being in Harrods of all places, like you know, I mean, you had loads and loads of people who come in, come in, to, come in to see you to talk about buying exercise equipment and things like this, and then then they would invite you to their houses and say, would you, you know, would you like to come and you know, put put me through an exercise program and things like this, you know. So I got to, I got to meet some wonderful people, you know, that way. And then, as I said, then as I, I uh, you know, I, I started up my own gymnasium. I had my, I published, start publishing my own exercise magazine, and had, you know, and, and written my own biography and things like this. You know, very exciting life then. It's, it's been great. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lovely, yeah, lovely life. Yeah, I've enjoyed every minute of it. So, um, obviously, Star Wars is your is your big thing. Is there any other movies that you've done that you are, are particularly uh, proud of? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I mean, Clockwork Orange, for instance. That was. That was a, a major step in my career, you know, the, the working for, just working for Stanley Kubrick. And I think the, the thing was, you know, prior prior to that, I was doing I was doing things like Hammer House of Horror stuff, you know. Uh, I was doing Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, and I was doing the, uh, the, 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 the horror of Frankenstein and Vampire Circus and things like this, you know, which were ni nice films, nice nice films to be in and, and enjoy. Um, but but there was no there was a, what I call no substance to it, if, if you know what I mean. But it, but it, and, it, and it wasn't until I, I actually had, had done Clockwork Orange and I'd worked for Stanley Kubrick and that ch virtually changed the, the, everybody's attitude towards me. And, and people, you know, it was like, it's like when, 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 I, when I got offered Star Wars, when I spoke to George Lucas comes on the phone and starts talking to me. And then I said, well, how did you know of me? And, and he said, well, he said, I, um, I saw you in Clockwork Orange. And I, and I said, and he said, if you're good enough for Stanley Kubrick, you're good enough for me. Thank you for. <laughs> and it was, and that's, and that's the way people, that's what people, you know, I, I, I suddenly became sort of Dave Price actor, of all things, which I never, I never anticipated. <laughs> right before we finish, I guess we have to uh, talk yeah. about the uh, the final thing, uh, Green Cross Code Man. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now I believe they're bringing him back. Or they have brought him. No, no, that that that, uh, that unfortunately all fell through. Oh. Um, that, to me, that was the greatest job I've ever had. I, I loved every minute. I did it. For, I did it from 1976 to 90. I was 14 years as the Green Cross Code Man. I remember you as the Green Cross Code Man. And, and the, the the actual, I mean, we actually saved over half a million children's lives. It was an incredible campaign, and uh, I, I, as I said, I did it for 14 years. And uh, and at the end of the campaign, I, I was I got awarded the MBE from the Queen. For, for services to road safety and charity. And, and how was that to meet Her Majesty the Queen? Oh, lovely. I, I went to Buckingham Palace and got, got my got my MB pinned on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was very nice. It was it, it, a, a nice nice thing. But as I said, to, for me, um, the Green Cross Code campaign was, was lovely because I used to I used to enjoy going around the schools. I used to do I used to, we used to, oh, for the entire school period. I used to I used to do five days a week. You know, every go, go to the schools. We used to do three schools a day, five days a week. Uh, giving, giving talks to children about road safety, and uh, and the, the talks were like three quarters of an hour, 
um, to, uh, to the whole school. I would talk to the whole school about, you know, about road safety. And then if I, had any, if, I had, if I had any time left at the end of the talk, you know, it was supposed to be three quarters of an hour, but if I, if I finished up, say, five or ten minutes early, I would say, like, anybody got any questions? Any, any kids got any questions? Of course, all the hands would go up, like, see. I never got one question about road safety. <laughs> Every question I got was about Star Wars. But so so I'm, I'm eternally grateful to, for, to Star Wars for the, uh, you know, for, the, for the success of the Green Cross Coat campaign. I mean, really, yeah. David, it has been an, an absolute pleasure. Yeah, you, you do not know, when I first met you, I was starstruck. Um, my, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you very much for speaking to us. It was great and brilliant. Enjoy, enjoy your cons, and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you very much.